Hello, Masoka Universe. Um, while I'm recording this, there's still Monday night games happening, uh, most notably the one between Spal and Sampdoria. So, uh, what I'm talking, I don't know the result, of course, in the screens on the side that you have. There is, of course, you will see the results uh, as it will happen and you will see the updated table. So, just as a heads up. As for the jersey, yeah. Uh, I decided on the Roma. I think, as we will see, they had a pretty darn good week with uh, good results. But actually, both Roman teams are really doing quite well. And so, yeah, I decided on Roma. I was between Liverpool and Roma. I, in the end, I said, yeah, maybe Roma is a little bit, uh, I'll say, more surprising because, you know, the Liverpool wins are kind of so and so. But maybe I'll wear Liverpool in my preview for uh, the Champions League, Europa League week, uh, what to watch for. Although, you know, I not always do those because it's pretty clear watch what you want. I mean, you have to follow what you can see. But let's summarize what was happening uh, over the weekend. And we'll start in La Liga where really, really, really a lot happened. Uh, namely, Remember, uh, Friday, I posted that the top two teams are separating themselves from the rest because they have a game in hand. Well, now they're a little bit pulled back. They're still top, but with Barcelona losing to uh, Levante. Valencia actually winning at Espanyol. So we had actually, it was the double, it was the City Derby week. We had Espanyol, Valencia, Levante, Barcelona, uh, with both Valencia teams beating the Barcelona teams. So Valencia beats Barcelona. Maybe I should have won a Valencia jersey then. And then we had the Sevilla Madrid uh, matchup. Sevilla Atletico 1 1 and the Real Madrid Betis 0 0. So I think Madrid wins on away goals, that duel. Uh, quite interesting, but two really huge results in there and even the Sevilla Atletico Madrid is a big one because if there would have been a winner that a team would have been ahead in the table. Yes with a game more but still. So quite an eventful Saturday. Uh, Sunday was also eventful. Um, Valladolid Mallorca 3-0 Villarreal Athletic Club was a game that I actually was thinking about watching but then got stuck in Osasuna Alaves and that was the right choice 4-2 was a very lively game Getafe beat Celta 1-0 uh, Leganes gets an early lead but cannot manage to win over Eibar and Rasa Ciudad gets a last ditch win over Granada which means on the table we have three teams with 22 points Barcelona, Real Madrid and the Real Sociedad Barcelona leading only based on goal difference. Again, note Barcelona and Real Madrid have the Clasico in hand, but uh, that doesn't mean that much. It means that uh, maybe the win of a Clasico would be three points clear. Uh, but if it's a draw, it's super, super tight. And super tight is what I would say the rest. The rest is that 22. Then we have two teams with 21. It's Atletico Madrid, Sevilla and Granada. Only 20. Would Granada have won this game? They would be top. It's now almost as tight in Spain as it used to be in Germany just a week ago or two weeks ago. Um, doesn't really stop Getafe, we 19, we are 18, Osasuna 18, it's the top half of the table and in the bottom it's also kind of, um, the drop off is really more or less at the relegation zone. Uh, we have still uh, Athletic Club, Levante, Real Valladolid and Valencia with 17, so kind of a broad midfield and then I would say Eibar, Betis, Alaves, Mallorca uh, teams in danger and then Celta, Espanyol and Leganes are really uh, the teams that had a bad start to the season, but I can for sure say Spain on the top is getting tight just when you think it's not, it goes the other way. And then I will say now it's super tight and you, you don't know what and it will go the other way. Uh, I have to say that when I look at Atletico Madrid, they wasting their chances. So many draws. If they would get some wins, I think Atletico Madrid could be really, really, really uh, way ahead of the pack. Wasted. Premier League, um, also interesting, uh, but mainly in the build-up now to the big clash that's happening in the next weekend. I think everyone will watch, be watching that Liverpool against Man City on Sunday. Uh, the best game of the next round. And there are two other really good ones, but that's the game, uh, bar none. Uh, Liverpool and City both not having the best efforts, both happy to come to behind to win. We had also Bournemouth winning over United, Arsenal only 1-1 at Wolves. 
Brighton 2 0 over Norwich, um, Sheffield 3 0 over Burnley, West Ham loses at home to Newcastle 2 3. Newcastle for the first time scoring more than one goal, I think, away from home, even scoring uh, from a set piece, so really uh, <laughs> a sign of life. And Chelsea getting another win, and Chelsea actually is, turns out to be a little bit the surprise of the season so far. And then the uh, late games, we had Leicester City winning 2 0 over Crystal Palace. Talk about that one, and Spurs throws away um, lead late a Everton equalizer with a horrible foul by Son. I still haven't seen it, but in the table, Liverpool six points ahead of City, and the clash next week might tighten it or might widen the gap. That's the most interesting part uh, to come. Leicester City and Chelsea uh, are in three and four and look to be at the moment really the uh, those are the top four teams. I think everyone else I wouldn't count much. Arsenal 17 is much higher than the performance would suggest, but you know, it, as I said, it's a very average um, rest of the league. Sheffield United can really, they don't win by much, they don't lose by much. This is the time they actually won by much, but 3-0. Um, but they are a very tight, tight group. They might as well stay in there. Bournemouth is also in the Brighton is, is up there. Crystal Palace, those are all teams that I wouldn't necessarily expect there. And then come two that I would expect up there, but they're not. It's United and Tottenham with 13 points. Wolves, West Ham also with 13. Then Burnley, Newcastle, Aston Villa, Everton. Relegation threatened teams, Southampton, Norwich and uh, Watford are really looking Bad at the moment, still games to be played. Bundesliga is still tight with that little twist. We had, first of all, the win by Hoffenheim over Paderborn, and then the super Saturday, Saturday with all the top teams playing at 3.30. Gladbach winning in Leverkusen, Dortmund over Wolfsburg 3-0. Frankfurt 5 on over Bayern Munich, cost Nico Kovac the job. He offered resignation. So we have Hansi Flick now uh, taking over, and let's see who will be the new Bayern coach with lots of discussions uh, in the office. It's not quite a clear picture, to be honest. I just don't think Mourinho would work well. And I think even Ralf Rangnick, I think, will not give up his sporting director post. Um, I actually thought Mark van Bommer could be a coach that could fit a little bit in this Bayern Munich thing. But let's see. Let, let's see if Hansi Flick will see up the season or they get a new coach. I just don't think the top choices by the bookmakers that those will not be uh, Bayern candidates, I think. Leipzig, 8 0 of our minds, huge statement win for Leipzig. Bremen, Freiburg 2 2. It was, yeah, Freiburg got the late equalizer, but you actually got a win in Bremen. The Berlin Derby ends 1 0 for Berlin, then uh, the Rhine Derby 2 0 for Düsseldorf. And Schalke twice behind, but gets the win. And so Schalke is also in the mix. If you look at the table, Gladbach now three points clear. It's for the first time that the team is really clear on top of the table because all the others did not really um, uh, rack up wins. Or if they rack up wins, they were a little bit further down. And that's why Dortmund and Leipzig are suddenly now in two and three, and Bayern is only in four. Note the goal difference for Leipzig, which is their um, advantage over Bayern. Freiburg is also 18, Schalke has 18. Frankfurt gets back in the picture and Wolfsburg really drops out, all out of the top. They were second not too long ago. That, this is how tight it is. And we have Hoffenheim in there and Leverkusen is in the midfield. And we see 10 teams that all have realistic hopes for Europe. I think it starts with Hertha, where we're talking about, yeah, uh, mid me midfield to going down. Uh, Werder is in there, Düsseldorf is in there, Union is in there, uh, Mainz, Augsburg, Köln, I think those are all, they could make it out of it, they could go down. Paderborn, I think, is the one where I really say they will be the ones that are relegated. Now, Serie A, let's see what happened. Here, as I said, I'm wearing Roma, so you already see uh, Roma got the win over Napoli. Um, it's, I would say somewhere between deserved and lucky. Inter gets a lucky win, Juventus gets a hard-fought win, so status quo remains. And then with Cagliari winning in Atalanta, not only um, Atalanta, you had to have thought that, yeah, now they're moving towards the top two, and then they drop the ball right here, and Cagliari really becomes the sensation of the season, I have to say. Udine wins 3-1 at Genoa, given that they had just been uh, 
twice demolished by Atalanta and Roma. The Popolo and Atalanta Genoa is huge for them because that kind of steadies the ship a little bit. Uh, that's just a solo 2 2. Verona, very contentious win. Balotelli talked about it um, in the video on Monday. Uh, races, chance, and so on. They get the 2 1 win. Fiorentina 1 1 of Parma and Milan. Unlucky loss against Lazio, I have happened to this. was the first time that I really thought that Milan played well. Should have gotten a point out of it. And yeah, Monday night game spell. Sampdoria. We'll see how that ends at the moment. It's a nil-nil. As I am recording this, um, let's see the table. Juventa above the rest. And now the two Roman teams are in three and four. Atalanta only five and Cagliari six. So we have three teams with 21 points. Napoli had a horror week. Absolutely horrible. Get three games, only two points. They should be very much in this mix in there. Would they have seven points more? They are 25 and in touch with the top two. But nope, they're not there. Fiorentina 16, staying kind of standing. Verona also and Parma in the midfield. Um, I have to say, Milan, I would say Milan has to be careful though, because the next two games they're not going to make many points. That's first against Juve away and then uh, Napoli at home. Uh, it could be that uh, by the end of November we're talking Milan being really relegation threatened. Could be. Let's see. So Milan 13, Udine 13, Bologna 12, Torino 11, Sassolo 10, 10. And then it's really uh, relegation on Spal 8. With a win, Spal could move up towards Torino. Uh, Genoa uh, has... Oh no, this is uh, actually reflecting the current uh, standing. So um, you will see how it, how, how it is. Before that game, Spal had seven points. Um, so with 10, they could move up uh, to Sassuolo and Lecce. Otherwise, they stay in the they will be in the relegation zone. Uh, Geno has eight, Brescia has seven. And Sampdoria, with the win, could get eight and probably get out of the relegation zone, although it could be tight because they're tied with Geno. But yeah, it's kind of close down there in Italy. Uh, let's move further to League A, uh, where we had the big result, which has actually no bearing whatsoever on how the league will go. Dijon beating Paris Saint-Germain 2-1. And it really, as we will see, will not matter much. Marseille wins against Lille. That's a huge win for uh, OM. Uh, Amir Brest 1-0. Angers Strasbourg 1-0. Metz Montpellier 2-2. Uh, Nîmes and Rennes has been postponed for some reason. I have to uh, don't actually know why there. If you know, please drop a comment below. Lyon wins at Toulouse, so that's an important win for Lyon. And then on Sunday, Bordeaux wins the uh, match against Nantes. So Nantes, as soon as some team in France is second, they find ways to distance themselves further from PSG. So. Not finally, uh, is not having a good string of games. Nice over Reims, one near Saint Etienne stops the run of Monaco. Uh, who will see is actually dropping, as we said over last time. It's really tight below PSG in France. Now, PSG seven points ahead of Angers, who uh, won not in 19, Marseille 19, Lille 18, Bordeaux 18, Reims 18, Saint Etienne 18. And those were teams, some, there were some teams in there that were way below bef uh, before. Brest 17, Lyon 16, Montpellier 16, Amiens 16, Nice 16, it's crazy. Rennes, Monaco uh, 15, and then there's the first drop, and Dijon just won. I mean, it's a sensational win. 12, Strasbourg 12, Toulouse 12, Metz 12, 11 points and you're in last place. It's really, really crazy tight in France. The only thing that's not tight is the championship race. We know that PSG is going to win and they probably can afford resting a few players and keep the um, eyes more or less on the Champions League. Let's see what they will do. Let's move on to Russia, where we had Zenit CSKA ending in a 1-1 draw. Zenit still staying on top, because Rostov and Krasnodar also play only a draw. Um, looking for a Lokomotiv. Uh, played a 1-1 one -one at Ufa. So, I mean, many, many draws when I look here. Uh, Spartak Moscow losing to Tula, which are kind of top. But if we look at the table, I mean, Zenit, Rostov, Lokomotiv, Krasnodar, CSKA, the top five. I think those are the teams that will fight for um, European spots and then there's a huge drop and I think the rest even though there are quite some teams in there that have names will not do much. Uh, 
want to move further now uh, quickly to Belgium where um, Standard loses uh, to uh, uh, Ghent 3-1 which means that with a win Club Bruges can move further ahead so we have now on the table uh, Bruges 33, Standard 27 and Ghent 25 uh, Champions League team Genk is actually quite off the pace losing 2-0 at open so yeah Belgium um, seems that Bruges will repeat in Holland PSV continues their hor horrible streak with only 2-2 draw at Sparta Rotterdam uh, Ajax winning 4-2 at Zwolle and uh, Alkmaar winning 3-0 over Twente so um, it is already 8 points between Ajax and PSV um, Alkma is two points ahead of PSV, so <sighs> PSV having also uh, not so good form over the past two weeks. Utrecht Vitesse kind of round out the top five. I know that there's a playoff system where other teams might go in, but those are seemingly are the strongest team in the Netherlands. Feyenoord gets a rare win, but is still very low in the table. Um, I also want to go then to Turkey. I'm not going to go through all the leagues now, just some uh, selected results where uh, we had, it's also super close in Turkey. We had Galatasaray is winning, they are moving up a little bit. Alanya Spor, who are actually the leaders, only a nil nil in Bajakshi here, so they stay in there. Trabzon loses at home to Gostepe. Uh, Bejiktas gets another big win, 2-1 over Antalya Spor, and they slowly are moving up. But yeah, uh, Fenerbahce losing 1-0 Kaiser is, but so it's a crazy weekend in a way in Turkey. And if we look at the table, I mean, it's Alanya Spor on top, then Siva Spor, then uh, Malatya Spor, and then Fenerbahce, Trabzon Spor, and Bajakshi and Galatasaray. So, um, all within three points of the lead. But Turkey at the moment seems to have a little bit of an off season. Besiktas follows with 15. So uh, I'm really curious how that will play out. Um, Austria, there, I think we can say already a decision has been made. We know who will make it in the championship playoff and who will go in the relegation playoff. We had a crazy round with only shutout wins. Almost all away wins except for Lask, the only team that wins at home. We had a huge result, Wolfsburg winning 4-0 at Sturm Graz. Uh, Sturm Graz playing in Graz and Wolfsburg plays in Europe in Graz. So it's kind of a derby not really because Wolfsburg is still far away from Sturm. But it's probably one of the second closest stadium that's not in their own town. St. Burton gets a surprise win at Rapid. Rapid, just when you thought they're going places, they again drop the ball big time. Salzburg easy win over Mattersburg. Then Altach, who were in last place, now with a huge win over Tirol 4-0. Hartberg gets a very contentious win over uh, Mödling. Uh, I have to say, uh, they probably deserved the win contentious because they, they had two players sent off. Still get the win at last, talk about it. Kind of an easy win over Austria win, 2 0. And when I say decision, if you look at it, the top six go in the championship playoff. Um, we really have a top three Salzburg, Lask, Wolfsburg. Even there is some quite some differentiation. Then we have three teams that are kind of a bit of four and six that's Rapid, Hartberg, and Sturm. Hartberg, the big surprise, I have to say here. Uh, that's our small town team. And then we have a drop of eight points. I don't think that either of these teams will make it into the top six, uh, even by round 22. Uh, it's only, it's eight games left. Eight points will be hard, especially for Austria in the form that they are in. And I want to actually end it in Greece, in the Super League Greece, because there we also had some big results. We had um, the one top game was Xanti Olympiakos without goals, and then another one where I heard Power got a very late equalizer at home to Panathinaikos, did not play well, given that Panathinaikos is in a bad shape. Uh, disappointing result. With also OFI from Crete losing 3 2 to Larissa. That's uh, one and Aik. Uh, puts itself a little bit back in contention, but not really against Atromitos. So in the table now, it's still a two-horse race between Olympiakos and Pauk. Uh, just want to check uh, the meeting next. No, they're not quite meeting. Uh, next round is Pauk at OFI and Olympiakos at home to Atromitos. And we have another Athens 
derby but yeah greece two horse race but lots of contentious stuff happening there as well uh sorry if i didn't cover any of the other leagues that you might be interested in. i just didn't have the time to look all over these i am planning then ahead of the national break to really run through all the leagues that i'm saying where we have teams in the champions league and that are in the top uh yeah, either top 10 in the European ranking or, t or having teams in the Champions League and running through those leagues. And we look also at predictions there. Drop a comment below if you want to add something. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.